Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem baseball game, even though this has practically nothing to do with baseball, maybe that's why it has so many dislikes, because other than that, I think it's a pretty good problem. It's very logical, there's no crazy tricks behind it, but I'm just going to skip the first paragraph because it's pretty useless. If this problem teaches you anything, it's basically how to kind of filter out the unnecessary information when you're reading a problem, which is actually a somewhat useful skill. So at the beginning of the game, we start with an empty record. We're given a list of operations where each of the operation could be one of the four following. It could be some integer given in the form of a string, as you can see, they don't really mention that, but yes, it's given as a string. In this case, there's five, there's two. Now they mention at the bottom of the problem that the integer itself could be, I think a value somewhere between negative a thousand and positive a thousand. So it might not just be one digit. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. But the other three operations are one is a plus symbol. What that means is we're going to add the two previous scores that we were given in operations together. And we're guaranteed that there are going to be at least two previous scores. So one thing we're kind of learning is that we're going to need to kind of memorize what the previous scores were, at least two of them. And the third one is a D, that means we're gonna double the previous score, the single previous score. And it's guaranteed that there will be at least one previous score. The last one is going to be the letter C, which means we're gonna invalidate the previous score, basically removing it from the record. Now what this means is we can't just keep track of the two previous scores, we have to keep track of all of them. Because what if we have a ton of C's in a row? That means we have to invalidate the previous one, then the next one, then the next one, and keep doing that. This kind of hints to us, since we're going to be adding scores and removing scores, a data structure to do that uh, is going to be a stack. Because as we add, we're going to be adding to the end of the stack. As we remove, in this case, we're also going to be removing from the end of the stack. So a stack data structure, we can do both of those operations in big O of one time. After we've gone through every operation, what we want to do at the end is just take the sum of all of the scores and return it. So if you couldn't tell before, yes, we definitely need to keep track of every single uh, score so that we can at least sum it at the end. So now let's just quickly run through this example and then let's code it up. So first we're just going to iterate through all of the operations starting at the beginning. So this time we have a five. What we can do in the code is first just check, is it a plus? Nope. Is it a D? Nope. Is it a C? Nope. So that must mean it's an integer. That's probably the easiest way for us to detect that. Otherwise we could use some kind of built-in function to check if it's an integer, but it's easier to just have this be the else case. So it's a five. So what we do is keep track of it. We're going to record it. We have a five. Next, we get another integer too. Let's record it and then move on. Next, we get a C. What do we do when we get a C? We invalidate the previous score. So to do that, we're gonna do a very simple pop operation on our stack, so we're invalidating the last one. So, as, so at the end, when we sum all of the scores, we're not gonna include this one. Next, we get to a D. D means we're gonna double the previous score. Now, we, the previous score is not two because we invalidated it. The previous one is gonna be five. We'll know that because we're just gonna take the top of our stack, which is gonna be five. So we're gonna take double five and we're gonna add 10 to the stack. Last we have is a plus. Plus means we're going to uh, take the sum of the two previous scores. We're guaranteed to have them and we do have them. We have a five and we have a 10. We take the two previous ones, add them together. We get 15 and then we add 15 to the stack now. And that's it. We went through every single one of these. So this is our stack. We have three values. What we're going to do is add all three of the values together. We're going to get a total of 30. And then that's what we're going to return. And that's exactly what they expected. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. Uh, first, we're going to just initialize our stack. It's going to be empty initially. And then we're just going to go through every single op in the input array and then just kind of write out the if statements. We know that one is a plus. Another one is if we have a D and another one is if we have a capital C. And then the last one is just going to be the else case where we have a number. So if we had a positive, that means we're going to 
take the sum of the two previous scores and add them together. So we're guaranteed that they exist. In Python, you can get the last value in an array or a stack by taking the negative one index, or we could take the length of the stack minus one. And to get the second to last one, we can take a negative two index, or we could just take the length of the stack minus two. Either way, you can do it, but this is easier in Python. We're gonna take the sum of those and then append that to the stack. So that covers that case. If we have a D, we're gonna take double the previous value. So to get the previous value, similarly, we're just gonna take the negative one index and then we're gonna double it, so two times that, and then we're gonna append that to our stack. So also not too bad. And then the last, uh, the C case is where we're invalidating the previous one. So we're not adding to the stack this time, we're popping. We're popping the last value that was added to the stack. And then the last case is suppose that op happens to be a number. So this time we're actually using op. We're gonna take op and we're gonna com uh, convert it from being a string into being an actual integer somewhere between negative 1,000 and positive 1,000, and then we're gonna append that to our stack. After we've gone through every operation and done that, all we need to do is take the sum of our stack. So now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. So the overall time complexity was big O of N because we're just iterating through every single input. And yes, we might be adding to the stack and we might also be popping, but we're only gonna pop as many values that we could have added to the stack. So it's gonna be big O of N, where N is the size of the input array. And of course, we're taking the sum of the stack at the end, but that's also a big O of N time operation. So the overall time complexity is big O of N. The memory complexity is also big O of N because uh, we have the stack and the stack could be of size. That's the same as the input array. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.